Nine divers, three days, one secret location. We're on the South Carolina coast searching for ancient teeth from a long extinct apex predator, Megalodon, a massive shark capable of growing up to 65 feet long. And my buddy Joey knows just where to find him. It's day one, and after a quick site briefing, the team starts assembling gear. And since it's March, most of us are diving dry suits to stay warm. Our thick undergarments will help keep us nice and comfortable when we're on the bottom for an hour. Once my gear is prepped and I verify all my cameras are working, I'll hop in and make my way through the water. On this trip, I'll be riding my scooter, and I have to say with how strong the current is, I'm really glad to have it. But even with the scooter, we only dive during slack tide which is the time between high and low tide where the current's the weakest. Once I make it a short distance from the shore, I start my descent to the bottom. And the first thing I notice is just how murky the water is. I try cycling through the various lights on my helmet to see which one helps the most. And before long, I make touchdown on the bottom. Not surprisingly, my first piece of treasure is a fishing reel, shortly followed by the rest of the fishing pole. And while I love cleaning the ocean, I have to stay focused on why I'm here, megalodon teeth. I keep looking around and quickly realize that finding a megtooth on a rocky bottom is going to be like a giant game of Where's Waldo. But I keep looking, and looking, and I see a few cool rocks here and there, but no megteeth. And after checking my computer, I discover I've managed to let my entire hour go by without finding a single megtooth. What a letdown. I head for the surface and crank up the speed on my scooter. I can feel the current picking up and it's time to get back to shore. Lucky for me, Joey was nice enough to help me carry some of the gear, which made my walk of shame back to the truck just a little bit easier. But if I'm honest, I was still really curious to see what everyone else found and figured at least I'd be able to hold a meg tooth even if it wasn't one that I found. So I drop my gear and make my way over to see their spoils. Oh, look at these. Found some sweet teeth and some vertebrae. That's awesome. Wow, look how massive those teeth are. That's absolutely insane. I have to get one of these for myself. I picked up a few pointers from the guys on how to search, but I'm gonna need a better plan. So me and my buddy JD decide to go a little further from shore this time. We're getting towed out to the dive site. Me and my boy Brent here. And down we go. The brackish water seems just as murky as yesterday, but this time, since we're a little further from shore, the bottom should be a few feet deeper. Once I touch down, I clip the scooter off to my side and begin the search. I'm not going back empty-handed today. And surprisingly, I almost immediately start finding shark teeth. Now they're small and definitely not megalodon teeth, but at this point, I'm just happy to be finding something. So I stuff as many of them as I can into my goodie bag, and I just keep grabbing more. I spent most of my dive in this spot, and it paid off nicely with some small shark teeth, and that's a whole lot better than nothing. At this point, I have a little bit of time left, so I decided to ride along the bottom to see what else I could find. And to my surprise, I found two horseshoe crabs just sitting on the bottom. That's actually the first time I've ever seen them on a dive. Then after taking some seaweed to the face, I found this little guy here crawling along the bottom. Next, I proceed to accidentally scare the heck out of a fellow diver. Hey Tom! And as I ride away to give him some space for a search, I come across two more horseshoe crabs. But it's time to ascend now. As I break the surface, I throttle up the scooter and ride back feeling a heck of a lot better than day one. But it's a little bittersweet. I'm happy to have shark teeth, but I'm pretty sure there aren't any meg teeth in there. I get lucky again as my buddy Sean comes up to help me with some gear, and this time it doesn't feel like as much of a walk of shame. We wait for the whole team to make their way back before taking our fins and laying out the day's treasures. And this is what we found. Woo woo, these are my finds here. Not the biggest, but definitely some nice pieces. Dude, these are awesome. Look how much bigger those are. Dude. Dude, apparently Josh has got a bag of teeth. Check this out. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, some nice ones. 
The team made a huge score. I don't even know how many teeth there are. I have 12 shark teeth just to myself and a little mystery object. But I still have meg teeth to find and only one day left. Day three was special. Not just because of what we find, but because it was a beautiful day. The skies were clear and the sunrise was amazing. It made for a really nice ride out with my buddy Joey. He's the one who organized this whole trip, by the way, and it made me feel like having him nearby had to be good luck. We rode out further than the previous two days, and when we made it to our destination, I throttled down the scooter and start my descent. It's my last day of searching. It's all or nothing. Meg teeth or bust. I quickly make my way to the bottom, which is just a few feet deeper than where we were the past two days, and I don't waste any time getting started. I begin sifting through rocks trying to find a meg tooth as fast as possible. And since yesterday I had better luck staying in one spot, I decided to try the same tactic today. But precious minutes were passing by, and the lack of teeth in this area was starting to make me nervous. I widen my search area a little bit to see what I can find, and I'm still not having any luck. I move just a little further and then it hits me. I'm off course. I'm in a totally different area than what I need to be. I check my dive computer to see how much time I have left, and the next gravel area I find, I make a decision. I start collecting rocks. I figured rocks were better than nothing, and maybe I'd get lucky and one of them would turn out to be a meg tooth. So this one with something growing on it, yep, I took it. This sharp one here, yep, going in the goodie bag. The stick looking rock, took that one too. And as I'm doing this, I found this sweet little shark tooth. Now, it's not a meg tooth, but it's a really nice find. And I started finding more just like it. So I grabbed as many as I could because after all, small shark teeth are way better than a wet rock collection. But I had to be fast because at this exact moment, the rest of the divers were starting to return to shore. And I knew it wouldn't be long before everybody started asking where I was. I couldn't let the hunt for meg teeth compromise safety. So after grabbing a couple more shark teeth, I checked my dive computer for the last time. I have to go, so I pick up my final piece of interesting wood, stow it in my goodie bag, and as I'm unclipping my scooter, I look right down in front of me, and I'm in utter disbelief. I find my first meg tooth of the trip, and nearby it, another one. What are the odds of that? I'm sure there are more close by, but I may never know. I can't be greedy, and I have to go. I break the surface, orient myself to shore, and this ride back was the best. I knew I'd be the last diver back, so I throttled up the scooter to overdrive, relaxed into the harness, and just enjoyed the ride. I finally had something to show the guys. And our last diver, Brent, coming in. But what I didn't know was that apparently there was a lot of anticipation from the rest of the team, and now they were all waiting for me at the top to see what I had. It felt amazing hey! to show them. Oh yeah, that's a nice oh, that's, one. Yeah. All the serrations on that are great. You got a good one, man. Thank God. You got your Yeah, there you go, man. You did it. Cheers to an amazing trip and all the new friends I made along the way. Subscribe and join me on the next adventure.